And I need to know if my partner has ever had a same sex encounter so that I know. Um, so the question originally was, how do you bring it up? I think as y'all are having conversations, I think you just say, so you want to talk about sex? Um, where you into? <laughs> Have you ever had a threesome? I, I personally love a direct approach. I think when we start beating around the bush and we start trying to soften things, it yeah. gives the other person too much wiggle room. And I want to see your body language. I want to watch how your breathing pattern changes. Like, so I'm just going to ask like, oh, have you ever had a threesome? And then you're going to say yes or no. And then I get to ask follow up questions because was it two of the same sex and you like was who was who in there? You know what I mean? Um, and I just think when you're talking about marriage, all of that's on the table. People want to get married. Sometimes people are in a rush to get married. But I think there are some questions that's necessary before saying I do. Sometimes you might see red flags. Sometimes you might not see them. But through this episode, we're going to give you a little more clarity on what to look for before saying I do. What's up, Brave Hearts community? This is Sean Heineman, your premier free engagement coach, back with another segment of It's Scary to Remarry, inspiring you to love fearlessly. Today's guest is a wife, a mom, a lover of Starbucks and all things office supplies. She is an LPC and has been in the field for over 10 years, so she knows what she's talking about. She is also a podcaster and content creator. I want to ask her about her podcast as well. Bravehearts community, let's show some love to Latoya Carter. How are you doing this evening, Latoya? I am doing so well. Thank you so much for having me. Hi, Brave Hearts. It, it feels like connecting with like an old family member because I feel like we've done this before, right? So I'm super excited to be here um, and ready to talk about it. Yes, for sure. A quick backstory. I've interviewed Latoya some years ago. I would probably say maybe 10 years ago, maybe something like Thinking that. Thinking so, because I'm not even sure if I had my middle baby and he's nine. Oh, so, wow. Yeah, it's been about, I was living in Murfreesboro and I think I've been in Texas since 2017. So yeah, probably about 10 years ago. Wow. Yeah, I'm in Austin, so we're not too far apart from each other. Yeah, yeah I'm in the Dallas area. We love it here. Sure. Dallas represent. Okay, so some of let's jump into this because I want to make sure I value your time. If y'all have any questions for our guests, make sure you leave a question below. And we can get that answered for you. Um, what are some of the most critical topics couples should discuss before getting married? Okay, and let me tell y'all that I'm about to answer this not only as a licensed professional counselor, um, but I'm going to answer this as a wife. I'm going to answer this as a wife who has been married for 10 plus years. Some of the topics that have to be discussed, money. We need to talk about the money. We need to know, are you a spender? Are you a saver? How much debt do you have? Because when you're fresh in love and you just starting out and your ends may not be meeting quite how they meet, we tend to shy away from those conversations, right? But then like, as we get older and we're like, oh, I want to buy a house. Oh, there's a credit score. Oh, your debt is my debt. Like all of these things change, right? So I think that talking about money up front is so, so important. Yeah. And then right up there with money is expectations Ooh. and I know that's a broad topic but I feel like we have all these silent expectations especially women especially if you my age and you grew up on Disney right because we thought the prince was coming and he was gonna save us and everything was fine mm -hmm. we had no idea they did not prepare us so I would say talking about like what are my overall expectations what's my definition of being a wife what's your definition of being a husband and how do they align mm -hmm. And then three, if I'm just going to slide this in real quick, mm -hmm. we got to talk about sex. Can I say that word on your show? Come on. We, yeah, no, we, can, <laughs> you, you said you're talking as a wife. So, you know, yeah, yeah we, so you got to talk about We got to talk about sex. <laughs> like, is, are we doing it twice a day? Are we doing it once a week? Like, what's the flow? And That's like, real. do a sis get some PTO days? Like, what, what, what are we doing? <laughs> All that needs to be discussed up front. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, that's that's real because, you know, once you get into marriage and and even I think the questions might change sometimes depending on like when kids are in the in the picture. Right. 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 You know, um, if you don't have any kids, then that's that's one thing. But 
Maybe if you're already coming into a relationship with a blended family, it could just look different. I know. So I'm beautifully blended um, for those Same. of us who don't know. Yeah, I'm beautifully blended. And talking about discipline is important. What are your expectations for your child? Like at my house, there's a bedtime and my friends used to laugh at me because at my house, every child at my house goes to bed when my child go to bed. And if your child don't want to go to bed, y'all got to go home. Like that's just the rules at my house. You don't like it. Go home. They used to think I was mad crazy back in the day, but like it just is what it is. Right. And so I think having those conversations about how do you parent? Do you gentle parent? Are you old school, traditional parenting, parenting? Like all that needs to be discussed. What are your plans for school? Do you like private school, charter school, public school? All of those things are on the table. Mm -hmm. Very true. Very true. Because uh, I know my wife and I, um, well, of course, when, when we known each other, when we first met, I was married mm -hmm. previously, went through a divorce right. and, and remarried. Um, so a lot of the questions that you're saying are valid because I remember my wife and I having those conversations and they're different now than what they were almost eight years ago. Right. Right. So, but I think they are very important that you ask those questions. How do you approach conversations like finances though? Like, do you, do you just basically ask them like, what's your credit score or like, no, I'm not. No, no. Okay, we, gotta, you... we gotta slide into okay. that one. But okay. I think if we're talking about marriage, right? Because the topic is, what are we supposed to talk about before marriage? Yes. So we are talking about marriage, mm -hmm. and so I love you, you love me, and we're about to do this. I think in having those conversations, you know how it's typically like, well, can you see me with you forever? And mm -hmm. where do you see our future? Then you just slide that thing. And so, tell me your thoughts about money. How did you see your parents handle money growing up? Mm -hmm. Open, yeah, you got to open the door because listen, what you don't want to do is say I do and think y'all about to ride off into the sunset and we can't even afford the carriage to get to the sunset. <laughs> so, so you got to slide that thing in there. Hey, so I was just, I know we're talking about marriage. Is there a wedding for the budget? I mean, is there a budget for the wedding? Mm -hmm. And then when they say, yeah, the budget for the wedding is this. Okay, so how do you typically budget? Mm. You need, but you have to get in there. You have to ask. Mm -hmm. Everybody's talking about what you bring to the table, but yeah, what yeah. kind of debt are you bringing to the table? <laughs> what, what, are, what are we talking about here? Do you have an Amex? <laughs> Do you have like a, a what Russell Simmons card yeah. used to be? You remember back yeah. in the day, you got one of them. What, what are we doing? Uh, black card. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh my God. Yeah. That's good because oh, finances is it's such a tough one. Um, but you got to have the conversation. You got to have a conversation. So let me ask you this before we move forward with finances. Could that be a deal breaker? Yes. When you're like your credit score is your credit score is 400. I, I can't do it. So I'm never going to tell you to drop somebody for their credit score because credit scores can be improved. Thank you, Jesus. Um, and you can work on that. And sometimes people just aren't educated about what it takes to navigate and maintain credit. And I think when we hear that your credit score is in the 400s, we just automatically assume you have a lot of debt and that you're delinquent. But you may just not know how to use your credit. You may not have anything in your name. And so your credit hasn't been developed. So before we leave you because you got a 400, can we pull the report? Like, are you open to that? Are you open to, can we go see a financial coach? Can we get some financial planning? So don't walk away immediately if it doesn't look how you want to look, but if they're not coachable and they're not willing to be open, I definitely think that's something to consider because this is America and money matters. Are we eating ramen or are we eating top ramen? Like what? You just need to know those things. Yeah. And nobody really told me that when we got married. And so I tell everybody, make sure y'all talk about money. Yeah. What are the thoughts on like, what are our goals for the money? Are we just trying to live check to check? Are we trying to do like, I don't know, Bitcoin and get generational wealth? Are we selling insurance on the side? Like, what are we doing? What is the goal? What is the plan for this union financially? Mm, that's good i like that yeah are we living check to check yeah well, what's up like what we doing <laughs> oh that's good I, mm. do, do you know who wall street trapper is on instagram yeah 
I think I've seen some of those videos. Mm Okay, -hmm. yeah, yeah. I remember I was listening to him him on an interview one day, and he said, "If you live in check to check, he said you're poor. He said you're not Yes. middle class. You're poor." Yes. And I was like, "Man, that is so real." And I'm thinking, how many people actually might think that they're middle class but just live in check to check? Mm -hmm. No, so it's Yeah, I think I think we think we're middle class based on our salary. But it's but if you make because some people really are making good what used to be good money. But I tell people like a hundred thousand is the new 50k. Like it's not what it was when we were all out here trying to hit six figures. It's not that anymore. It's the new 50k. Um, but I think sometimes we associate salary with class, not taking into account that I might be making a hundred, but I owe a hundred and five. So I still don't have it. Mm hmm. Mm. 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 That's good. Wow. I uh we have a question that was asked. Uh how do you I guess he's getting a little ahead of himself, but he says, How do you suggest discussing sexual history? So I guess it just kind of depends on how nosy you are. I'm not a person that needs a body count number. I don't need that, but I do need an STD panel. I need that. I need that. Like, I don't know that I care how many people it was. I care, are you clean and can you commit to me? So I think it's about what do you care about? If you need a body count number, I'm going to challenge you to consider, can you handle the number? Because if she says, he or she says one, then you're like, oh, they inexperienced. They ain't, what they going to do with me? But if they say a thousand, then are you intimidated? So I would just be careful discussing sexual history. I'm more concerned about the STD panel. I want to know that you're clean. And then I also want to talk about preferences. What are you into? Because am I into that? Mm. Mm, that's good yeah because Yeah. he said he said oh yeah because he said such as gay threesomes or other wild stuff because Preferences. <laughs> yeah yeah mm. yeah because I heard someone talk about this the other day about um being with the same sex like if that was something that you dealt with in the past Mm -hmm. like you know does that affect us now like well I don't, I, I don't i don't do it anymore it was just an experience you know like do you discuss that as well you know so I would want to know that. mm -hmm. I, yeah, because I need to make a full decision. And I need to know if my partner has ever had a same sex encounter so that I know. Um, so the question originally was, how do you bring it up? I think as y'all are having conversations, I think you just say, so you want to talk about sex? Um, what are you into? <laughs> Have you ever had a threesome? I, I personally love a direct approach. I think when we start beating around the bush and we start trying to soften things, it Yes. gives the other person too much wiggle room. And I want to see your body language. I want to watch how your breathing pattern changes. Like, so I'm just going to ask like, oh, have you ever had a threesome? And then you're going to say yes or no. And then I get to ask follow up questions because was it two of the same sex and you like was who was who in there? You know what I mean? Um, and I just think when you're talking about marriage, all of that's on the table. Because I'm about to commit my entire life being community resources to you. And I need to know what's up. So I really do love a direct approach. I like that. Yeah. The direct, yeah. The direct approach. Cause that way it's It just like, get in there. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. yep. Yeah. Like, no, this is what I asked, you know, opposed to kind of, Oh, was it like this kind of, you know, nah, I need to know. I need to know. That's good. And then I, I need to be specific because so like I'm heterosexual. And so it's like so I would ask my husband, like, have you ever been with another man? Like, that would be the question. That's real. Do you have those thoughts? Um, have you ever engaged in a threesome? If he were to say yes, I would say, so tell me what the sex of the people were. What was going on? Because what if it was two men and a woman? Like, I need to know that. I need to know what's going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Preferences. because that's real. Because <laughs> give or take the situation, you know that. My, hey, I'm I, I don't swing that way, but it was Right. two guys and a woman, so it's So it's like, do you? real conversations. Real conversations. Yeah, we we starting off uh, real. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I be trying to get to it. Like, what's what we doing? Let's talk about it.
You know, that's real. That's real. How do you feel about, um, I, I know we talked about blended families a little bit, but maybe how important is it to know someone's, uh, the, the, the parent's child? Like, do you feel like you physically need to meet this person? I do. Okay. okay. I do. Only because children aren't, children who are, you know, typically healthy, haven't experienced a lot of trauma. They aren't um, tied to the same social norms and the same um, niceties that we are. And so if my child has an adverse reaction to you upon meeting you, they probably sense something, feel something. You know how they say babies and dogs know. So yeah. I need to know if my baby is going to be scared when you walk in the room. I need to know that. So I do think that children should. I think that they should physically meet. Um, but I also think it's personal parenting preference. I am not a parenting expert. Let me repeat for the people in the room. I am not a parenting expert. But I just think if we're going to combine lives, I need to see how you interact with the life that I created. I need to know what that looks like. My child can't go to sleep and it's just us. Then we wake up tomorrow, have a ceremony, and now here you are. I don't think that's fair to the child. Mm -hmm. Especially considering age. Now, if you got a six-month-old, I don't know that you could do that. But <laughs> like in my case, my daughter was 10. She turned 10 the day after my wedding. So, yeah, she needed to know. Got you. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Uh, how can couples navigate conversations about career ambitions and work-life balance? The B word. Oh, it just makes me cringe because I really don't believe in balance. I don't think that's a thing um, because the definition of balance is all things are equal. All things are never equal for real. We'd be trying to play like they are, but they're not. That's right. So how do couples navigate those conversations? I think um, I think it kind of depends. Is there conflict around that or are we just having a conversation about it? Because if there's conflict around that, it's usually not career and ambition is typically money. Mm. So if there's conflict, then we need to have a conversation about the money. Because that because if your person is a gamer, but they make in multiple six figures and they paying all the bills, you don't have a complaint. Mm. If your person's a gamer and they don't got they half, if y'all go half seats, <laughs> you have a complaint. And so it's not the career or the ambition. It's typically the money if there's a conflict around it. So I just encourage like a lot of open and direct conversations. I think being on the same page initially helps to prevent all of this. So when we're talking about getting married, it's like, OK, so when you become the head of my household, what does that look like? And then typically the man is not giving you the answer that you're looking for. So you ask a follow up. You say financially, what does that look like for you? Are we doing half Z's, one third Z's? Are you paying for all of it? What does that look like? Mm -hmm. So if there's conflict around money, that usually tells me that there wasn't a financial conversation had before the lives connected. So before we moved in together, before we got married, before we did any, any of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. And I think being supportive, I think you can just ask, hey, so like this job you got, you really like it. You're trying to stay here. Is this where you want to retire from? Um, is there anything else that interests you? Is there something that I can support you with? I think you could just ask. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Like you said, be straightforward. Uh, we have another question. Is it OK to ask exes about why they broke up with their current partner? So is the question, it, if we're together, would I ask your ex? Yeah, she says, is, is it okay to ask exes about why they broke up with your current partner? Yeah. I mean, so, I feel like <laughs> I feel like this is life and you get to do it how you want to do it. But I always think about like for every action, there's a consequence. And so if you were to ask your partner's ex mm -hmm. how would that make your partner feel because then does your partner feel like there's a lack of trust is your partner going to be left feeling like well dang you know i said she was crazy or i said he was crazy why didn't you just believe me mm -hmm. so making sure that you can handle the consequences and then also you may get an answer that you weren't looking for and then how does that change the dynamic in your home mm -hmm. and so like you've opened up this door of like mistrust and doubt 
And then, like, how does that impact everything moving forward? So, I mean, I guess you could, because, like, we've grown. You can do whatever you like. But I don't know that I would encourage that. Mm, that's good. Yeah, because, and, and I heard someone talk about that. I heard a, someone else talk about that, too. Like, you should ask the ex or whatever. But like you said, you, you're, it's almost like you're starting a relationship with all these negative, you know, stuff the way you were in your past or right. with that person right because let's talk about how and i've seen it happen a man can dog out every girlfriend he has ever had then he finds the one and he is flying right straight like married her wife her up real quick and like he's fine and women too like women we you know we do our thing or whatever so i'm not just saying a man i'm just speaking from like being a heterosexual woman but you can be a terrible partner to everyone who's not supposed to be your forever partner. But when you meet your forever partner, they can unlock something in you and you like, oh, I got to get right. I got to go home. Like, which I look, no, I'm, I'm good. You know what I mean? And I think that it's important to understand patterns, but I also just believe that people can change. Yeah. And so even though he or she might have been terrible to the person before you, it doesn't necessarily mean they're going to be terrible to you. Mm -hmm. That's do, yeah. Because do you, so you believe in more of people can change depending on who they're with. If they want to. If Yeah. If they want. Yeah. I also think people get to a certain age and they, I hate to say settle because I'm not saying settle for their partner, but I'm saying settle within themselves and they're a little bit more stable, a little bit more calm. They don't have the same interest. They, they just kind of grew up. So I do think people can change based on who they with. Mm, yeah, that's good. That's good. Hello, everyone who are joining us. Hello, Calabria. Um, she says she's getting married soon. So do you have any questions for our guests? Because uh, Latoya is asking all the questions. I don't know if you were able to get in earlier or not, but she's giving all the dope advice. So if you have any questions, make sure you ask. Oh, <clears throat> now my wife and I, we dated long distance before we married. How do you feel about long distance love? Oh, I love it. I'm here for it. Yeah. Before, mm -hmm, before I got with my, um, he's my husband now, but before he was my boyfriend, I used to date long distance. Mm. It's something so like special about we are long distance and like I love you and it's like all about us when we see each other and then I can go home and be in my space <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> with my things and like my stuff situated how I want it like <laughs> I'm okay and now I don't think that it's good to be long distance forever right. I, but I do think that long distance love is cool mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah because one thing I think that really helped my my wife and I was uh, we we was on uh, Skype. So I guess I'm saying how long ago this was. <laughs> we used to uh, read books together. Nice. I think that the emotional connection is bigger because we, we can't just paw each other and like touch on each other every time. And then we're also not as distracted by the things that are in our daily life. So when you're long distance and your partner calls you like, okay, let me go to the other room. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you're going out of your way to turn the TV down or like mm -hmm. I'm cooking, but hold on, let me put it on the eye of this eye of the stove. You know what I mean? I think you go out of your way to give this person your undivided attention. And so I think the emotional connection can sometimes be better. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, and I think even from a physical perspective, I think, uh, you know, even with sex, right? Like you are you really have, have to know this person. Yeah. You know, you got to know me because I'm not about to catch a flight. I mean, some people would catch flights, you know, to do what they're going to do. But for the most part. Uh, right. You got to try to get to get to know someone. Uh Okay, um, one of our guests, um, Calabria, Calabria asks, any advice for a busy single mom getting back out on the dating scene? Get out on the dating scene. Nobody is coming to your house unless they work at Amazon or they're the trash guy or they're trying to rob you. Prince Charming is not showing up at your house. So I do encourage you to get out. That's the only way you're going to meet people. Now, I met my husband on a dating app. But my clients and my friends, they say don't do that no more. So I don't know. Um, 
I don't know. I don't know how else you meet people these days for real, right? Like you're not in school. You don't have those like built in social activities. So I, I like the dating apps for people, but the people that's actually on them was like, no, nah, I don't do that. So my advice would be to get out. But then also, if you are dating to be in a relationship, date to be in a relationship. Like the moment they start acting shady, the moment they like, well, I'm not sure, move on. Because people take up space. And if you're dating to get married or if you're dating to be in a committed relationship, you can't be playing games with Mr. Wrong taking up space. Mr. Right can't get to you. That's so, true. but definitely get out so that you can see what's going on. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Because uh, the Amazon guy, I know he dropped your package off, but you know, he, he got a wife. You don't yeah. want him. He got a wife. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, another question came in. Any suggestions? Oh, well, we talked about long distance dating, but she says when you both own homes and have kids with involved co-parents. Ooh, y'all got to have a family meeting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, so from a very high level, not knowing your personal situation. So remember, you are the expert on your life. This is just a very high level conversation, but y'all got to have a family meeting everybody's mom and daddy partner everybody y'all gotta have a family meeting because what does it look like you have to consider the children's ages if you got a senior in high school i'm never saying move the senior in high school you have a kindergartner they'll adapt mm -hmm. um so i would say have a meeting with everyone like what are the expectations what we do so y'all are long distance can y'all move in the middle so that you're not too far away from either family. That's something to consider. Y'all can rent y'all's houses out or Airbnb them out or, I mean, or sell them and put the money on the wedding or the honeymoon, you know, whatever y'all are into. But I think just being considerate of the children and the co-parents, because I think having an involved co-parent is a huge blessing. And I think that your children are all the children involved are blessed to have so many adults in their life. I think that's a great thing. And so making sure like if you all are six hours away from one another, maybe move three hours so that you're just three hours from each set of children and each set of co-parents. And then y'all can talk about like with the co-parents, how often are you willing to drive an hour and a half to meet me? What does it look like if I move? Um, can they, can the children stay here? You know, depending on the age of the children, listen, <laughs> let the babies go. I'm just, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm with you. I'm with you. Hey, go. <laughs> okay. Take, these your kids too. I'll be a weekend mama. What we <laughs> For real. These your kids. <laughs> yeah. Your kids with you. But yeah, so those are some of the things that I would suggest. Mm -hmm. And just, enjoy, you know, enjoy the distance, but eventually y'all gonna want to be together. So whose house is the biggest, is the nicest do we want to live in? Or if his house was like passed down from generation to generation, y'all probably want to keep that one because it means something, you know? So just thinking about those things, I think is important. Yeah, for sure. Uh, the questions are coming in, the toy they come in. Uh, I love Q&A, it's my thing. Okay, well, here we go. Uh, what is your advice on a sexless relationship or marriage after a couple of months? Is somebody sick? Um, because sometimes people get sick and they can't perform. Mm -hmm. Is there like something going on from a medical perspective? I think that would be the first thing. Mm -hmm. But usually if there is no medical stuff going on, like nothing is physically wrong with either of you, then the lack of sex is just a symptom of something else that's going on. So my question would, or my advice would be to dig into like, what are we actually doing? What's the matter? Um, why are we not touching each other? Is this our pattern? Do we go through, I don't want to say droughts, but I'll say um, periods without sex. Like, do we do this often? And then you could just initiate. Be like, hey, come here, buddy. <laughs> I'm silly. So I would say it like that. But I mean, you could do the whole like Johnny Gill, Key Sweat, R&B, like the candle situation. But I just don't want you to put that much effort into it and then get rejected and then your feelings be hurt. And then you'd be like, well, the lady on the internet said, <laughs> so, <laughs> so I would say just figure out like what's going, what happened? It's been a couple months. Nobody said anything like mm. y'all going on dates. Like what happened? 
Yeah. That would be my like if 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 I saw this in my office, if, if a couple came to me and said that, those would be the questions that I would ask. Yeah. And so I'm assuming that you want to have sex because you asked the question. And so my question to you would be, have you initiated? Mm, that's good. Mm-hmm. Because some that's a good question. Because sometimes and given the situation, that was just just the question he asked. He didn't respond right. to anything yet. Because right. sometimes guys, I mean, we 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 will go feel, on strike. We 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 want to feel wanted too. You know, I, you know what I'm saying? I, you know, yeah. I, I've definitely seen that. I've yeah. seen where a guys like she need to want me too. Oh, okay. She was like, I do, but we just have it. And then I was like, okay, you gotta initiate, like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I also think that some women, um, I typically embrace like my quirkiness, but some women don't, they don't know how to, and they get embarrassed. And mm-hmm. you got to make sure if you've asked your partner to initiate when they initiate, even if it doesn't look like red light special, you're still receptive to it or they won't do it again because nobody likes rejection. Got you. So are you saying, so are you saying that? they they have to accept your authentic self when uh trying to make that approach well wait a minute he says he says when on dates no illnesses uh i have constantly initiated and 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 she's just been stressed with school oh okay Hmm. So I'm not trying to be a pocket watcher, but is it possible for you to take her like on a getaway weekend? And it could be a staycation. Mm-hmm. Don't have, we ain't got to get on no flight. Um, but is it is it that she's just not responding because she's stressed? But if y'all are married, she got to figure out how to um, navigate that stress and navigate the marital bed also. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I'm assuming that's that's probably a conversation that they maybe that they didn't have in this process of starting school and the stress that mm-hmm. that comes with it, right? You know, because two months is that's a lot. I don't think that's fair either. Yeah, I don't, and and so I get in trouble for this when I do when I see couples mm-hmm. because they're always like. You're just agreeing with him. No, I'm just trying to be objective. And like two months is a long time. And if he step out, you're gonna be mad. So what's up? <laughs> like, yes. What we gonna do? Yes, I totally agree. How do you? He did. He didn't respond or okay. anything. Yeah. So if he respond, I, I was still. I, I'm. I'm kind of interested in this. In this piece right here because it seemed like you're asking. Like he's asking legitimate questions, and I'm interested in your answers because I'm like, that's that's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, what was I about that? Oh, uh, what are some? How can couples prepare for conflicts, and what strategies help resolve them in a healthy way? I love this question because people are always like, "I'm gonna be ready for conflict," <laughs> and when conflict happens, your heart beating fast, your emotions are going, and you ain't thinking nothing about what that lady said. Um, so. I would say individually having really good emotion regulation or really good like um, awareness of your body, awareness of what it looks like for you to get upset is is important because then you can understand like, oh, I'm escalating. I don't want this to be a conflict. Let me do what I need to do to de-escalate. Um, so I think having awareness internally is very important, but then let's say y'all are in the thick of it. Y'all forgot everything everybody said. Somebody has to take a time out. Nobody is listening if we're yelling. Nobody is listening if we are defending. Mm -hmm. Nobody is listening if we're blaming. So we have to take a time out so that we can take a couple deep breaths. We can take a walk. We can do whatever we need to do so that we can regulate and, and then come back together. And I think always addressing the issue. The issue is our common enemy. You're not my enemy because we're together. And I think what happens is when we're in conflict and when we're arguing, it feels like you're my enemy. Mm -hmm. You're not my enemy. The lack of sex is my enemy. You didn't put the toilet seat down. That's my enemy. You didn't call me back and I told you I was scared. That's my enemy. Mm -hmm. Remembering what we're trying to fight or navigate against is the thing or the behavior, not the person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And sometimes that can be hard to, when you're in the middle of it, 
you like you you the devil yes you know you the devil <laughs> yes <laughs> Yeah, that's that's real. And I want to ask you, uh, uh, there's another question, uh, but I, I want to ask you this real quick. Uh, how do you feel about how long? I guess you don't have to be technical, but how long should you take your break? Because sometimes I feel like when when you go for a walk or whatever, sometimes I feel like people like building their case. They are. And so let me tell you, so when I'm talking to couples, I tell them, like, we have rules to time out. Time out is not a free for all. So the rule is um, we don't leave the house in the car. We don't call other people mm. and we actively try to calm down. You don't take a time out to be like, OK, they said this. I'm going to yeah. say this. They messed up. Like you hyping yourself up. That's not what the time out is for. Because okay. now because now when you come back to the conversation, you're not calm. Remember, I wanted you to be calm. I didn't want you to be hyped up. <laughs> so that's part of what I say. Like, don't hype yourself up. You are actively working to regulate. So you taking deep breaths. You saying, this is my partner. I love them. You saying a prayer, if that's your thing. But you are actively working to regulate your emotions. I personally feel like as an adult, you should be able to come back within 15 minutes. If you can't, go see that lady. Because we need to figure out why. Why is it taking so long? Okay. Yeah, because I didn't know if like taking a break meant, you know, I'm going to go and catch a movie. I'll be back kind of thing. <laughs> like, I didn't know how long. Mm -mm, because what happens is a movie is two hours, right? So mm -hmm. now you have left me at home for two hours and you gone. I done created 45,000 scenarios and none of them are good. Got you. Makes perfect sense. I got mm -hmm. you for sure. Another question was asked if if your future spouse doesn't want to perform a certain act or positions, should that be a deal breaker? That's a very internal question. I don't think there is a should. I think, can you go the rest of your life without this act or position? That's the question you have to ask yourself. Mm -hmm. Because if it's something that you feel like you have to have, it's something you feel like you need, like you feel like this show jam, you're going to eventually cheat to go get it. Mm. We just like people going to get their needs met. And and if we start to recognize and just really accept that people are going to do what they need to do to get their needs met, I feel like relationships will work a little bit better. So if this position is your mm, like this is it for you and this person is like, absolutely not. Can you go the rest of your life without it? That's the question. Wow. That's heavy. So you. Oh, wow. But what if they have like all the great traits, but they don't like doing that one thing? And I'm not saying anything that's like outlandish. You know what I'm saying? I'm not right. saying anything that's, you know. It could be whatever. It could be from hot to not, mild to wild. Like it could be whatever. It doesn't matter. It's your thing. Can you live without your thing? And are you willing to give up everything that this person is mm -hmm. for this one thing? Some people are like, yes, throw the whole thing away. <laughs> Other people are like, no, I'm just going to silently suffer and, and just focus on the 80. It just depends on you. Like, because don't get with this person. And this person was very clear about their manager. And they said, no, I'm not doing this. And then you marry them. And then you cheat on them with somebody who's doing this. Like, you're the villain. Because they told you no. Wow. Oh, that heavy. Mm -hmm. To throw the whole person away for a position. Some people but and other people won't but the thing is five years from now you haven't had this position and you like you got an itch you like true. you like but we married now and they like mm -hmm. and i said five years ago no and my answer is no like they they didn't change they were up front which i always tell people we never pay enough attention to the upfront honesty we always think we're gonna change them they're going to get with me and they're going to see. And, and no, like people know what they want and what they don't want and what they're going to do. People typically know. Yeah. Do things change? Yes. Can they have seen something on the movie and be down for it now? Sure. But don't bank on that. Because what if they never see the movie? You know? <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. That's good. Yeah, because... And I don't know why. Can you help me with this real quick? This is not in my notes because you talked about this. Why is it that people feel that they are the exception opposed to the rule when it comes to dating? Like, I'm going to be the one. I mean, he he might have three baby mamas. Listen. And for some odd reason, you thinking that you are a unicorn. Listen, it's not just in relationships. It's in friendships, too. 
it's in work situations, we always think it's not going to happen to us. We always think we're the exception to the rule. And like, I used to have that bad. Yeah. Like, one of my friends had to humble me like, well, sis, if everybody do it, then I shouldn't even have the rule. You right out, never try you like that again. You know what I mean? Like, I honestly don't know why. I just think we, first of all, in relationships, I think we overestimate our own je ne sais quoi, our own whatever we're bringing to the relationship because it's us like, and everybody should think that they the bomb, like they just should. Yeah. Um, and so I think in romantic relationships specifically, we just think whatever we're doing, however we're catering, however we speak in a love language, we just think that's going to change their mind. And it's it, probably not. Mm -hmm. It's probably not. Yeah. During, during your time of practice, mm -hmm. what do you think, give me um, a percentage of people who, from what you see, will actually change? Do, do you think people can change or are, are people like- I do. Oh, okay. I do. Okay. I just think that the way we're looking for people to change is not realistic. I think we want people to go to therapy, take a class, whatever, mm -hmm. and they're going to come out and have done a complete 180. That ain't really how it work. Mm -hmm. People changing in increments of like five. Can you see the five? Do you appreciate the work that we did to get to this five? Yeah. You know what I mean? And so I absolutely think people can change and I absolutely think people can grow, but it just doesn't happen as quickly as other people would like. Cause they like, well, you done been to eight counseling sessions. Why are you still doing this? Mm -hmm. And I tell anybody, the first two don't even count. <laughs> the first two to three don't count. Like the very first one, um, it's all information gathering. I'm trying to understand, but I'm also trying to make you like me because if you like me, then you'll come back and you'll tell me and you'll work. Um, so the first two to three, like don't even count. So you saying they went to eight sessions. They really went to five, mm -hmm. five and a half. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it just doesn't happen as quickly because sometimes people don't even know what they've been through and how that shapes them. I cannot tell you the amount of men that I have seen who are unaware that they've been abused. Mm -hmm. But now they know that they're abused. So we gotta spend sessions like accepting that, working through that. Like we ain't said nothing about change. Mm -hmm. I said acceptance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you like, you keep talking to her, nothing's happening. Well, we're here now. <laughs> wow. So then after the acceptance comes the change and it's still not gonna be a 180. It's going to be like two and then two more. <laughs> and now we're at five, you know, like yeah. it's gradual. And so, yeah, people can change, but it's not that dramatic TV change that we think it's going to be. Yeah. It's kind of like, yeah, like the screen is just like six months later. Yes. They change. Yeah. Like they just switch scenes in the six months later. <laughs> right. Yeah. And right. now they got six pack abs. Right. And y'all know that's not how it works. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I got another question. Cool. Uh, is, is there a particular premarital book or workbook to buy in preparation for marriage? Yes. Mm, hold on. So the Gottman Institute has yeah. an amazing premarital everything. Mm. So everything by the Gottmans is great. Yeah, but then it's a blue one, and I can't ever think of it. There's there's one that I read. Um, well, there's one book I read by Gary Thomas called "Sacred Marriage" that was really that's good. good. Uh, that's good. Uh, "Love and Respect" by Emerson Edricks is pretty good. I haven't um, read that one. It, it's probably a little dated, but it 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 makes love and respect so simple. It's just like why didn't I? It's like really like. It's such a simple read that you're surprised at yourself. Like, why didn't I catch that? Mm. Uh, that's a really good one. And what is it called? The bulletproof marriage, the fail proof marriage. I'm looking at my bookshelf. That's why I'm looking around. And oh. obviously I don't see it because in the because why wouldn't it be right here? Right. Yeah. But it's called the something proof, a fair proof marriage, maybe. Mm. Yeah, I can't find it. But that's a good one. Mm -hmm. 
I'm gonna go ahead and do a shameless plug. The Wife's Guide to Beating the Side Chick by Latoya, the therapist. Amazing. You can get that on Amazon. Mm -hmm. The girls love it. Um, oh, can you tell us about that? I'm gonna put it in the description below, but uh, can you tell us a little bit about that book? That sounds good. Okay, so I wrote this book, my baby's nine, nine, eight or nine years ago. Yeah. At the time, I used to be hooked on reality TV. Hooked, <laughs> hooked, love and hip hop, everything. Um, and everybody was cheating. And I don't know if y'all remember uh, Peter and um, Tyra and Amina, like they were really big in their triangle. Um, and so I was having a conversation with a friend. I was new in my marriage and we was like, well, Guess I'm going to clean up because if I don't, the side chick going to do it. Like it was like a running joke. And then it became like my love letter to wives. Like marriage is hard, but it's not as hard as we make it. And it's only hard because we don't know what's hard about it. So if you ask anybody that's been married for any amount of time, they'd be like, whoo, marriage is hard. I heard that so many times, but nobody ever said like, this is what makes it hard. And then this is what you do about it. Well, that's where my book comes in. Mm. It's just my love letter to wives. I talk about sex. I talk about communication. I talk about self-care, all of those things. And it's not, I know the title, y'all, this was a while ago. I was young. And so I know the title sounds like it's going to be anti-women and it's not it's really like my love letter to wives like you signed up for this this what we gonna do mm -hmm. um and so yeah i love that book yeah it's my little baby cool. that sounds good i'm gonna have that linked up in the description below and 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 all your other good stuff as well your website and stuff oh thank you um what was i gonna ask you how long and, and this is how long is how long does it take for a marriage to jail like how do you know when you marry Mary? is it like year five is it year 10 i think it's kind of like a baby right like y'all know you okay when you see a newborn you're just like oh, oh my <laughs> god and then like the baby don't sleep at night and so you like yeah that is the coming together, living together. You didn't put the toilet seat down. You wipe everything twice. I don't wipe every Like, all of the things, right? Yeah. So, I think if you look at it, like, the lifespan, because I know my first year, baby, oof. I was like, just kidding. <laughs> this is, we, I, you want out if you, I, mm. but, you know, years later, here we are. Yeah. Um and so I think I just kind of think about it like, like a lifespan. So I didn't have the terrible twos. I had the terrible one. And then from there, it was like, okay, we're just going to work to be better. Like we're breaking up. Now nah, we ain't breaking up. Okay, well, let's keep working to be better. Okay, I'm checking in. We, we're we oh, Okay. And then suddenly we're not checking in anymore. Mm. We're just consistently working to be better. Mm. So... I don't know. I feel like that's different for every couple. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Because I heard someone someone ask that question the other day. They was like, "Yeah, you're like newlyweds, you know, you that first year, but then it's like when y'all start hitting on all cylinders, you know. I, I guess that kind of, I guess it just depends on how much work are you willing to do, right? I mean, exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah, it's like your life. It's like your morning routine. It's like anything that you put any stock into it. It fires on all cylinders. The more you put more stock into it, mm -hmm. like you get your morning routine down to a science after you've practiced it over and over and you see what you like and you see what you don't like. And you like, am I doing this because she did it? Do I really like green juice or whatever mm -hmm. you're doing in the morning? Right. Like <laughs> and you just keep working at it. And I think that for us, at least. And for the couples that I see, the work just starts to look different. Mm -hmm. Like it used to look like, okay, I'm a runner. Used used to be. Um, and so it's like, oh, you don't make me mad. I'm out. Like I'm done with this. Daddy, come get us. Like I'm not doing this. So that was probably part of it. And then like being a single mom, I'm very independent. Mm -hmm. Very. Well, I used to be. Child, I'm so dependent now. I mean, like, <laughs> what was? <laughs> What was my life like before? Like, I will literally wait for him to come home and be like, hey, can you take me to Target? Y'all, I've been driving since I was 15. 
<laughs> I used to steal my parents' cars, but I'd be like, could you run me to Target? <laughs> and and he's to a place now, like, if I drive to Target, he'd be like, are we beefed out? Like, what's, you all right? What's wrong? It couldn't wait. Yeah. So I just think that you just, to me, I feel like as long as we're having a different problem and we're having an internal problem, we could figure it out. Mm. When we start having external problems, I can't figure that out. Wow. That's good. Wow, that's heavy. Mm -hmm. Oof. Uh, well, we might have to bring you on for a part two because anytime uh, yeah because this was good there's there's questions oh, yeah it, before we go do y'all have any more questions before we close out this segment because i want to be respectful over time tonight so if you have any more questions um feel free to drop them below uh latoya let everyone know how they can get in touch with you what you got coming up um tell us about all the, the website, all the good stuff Okay, so you can find everything that you ever thought you wanted to know about me on my website, LatoyaTheTherapist.com. I spend most of my time on social media at Instagram, at LatoyaTheTherapist.com. And then if you just click, click the link in my bio, you can find everything. So just LatoyaTheTherapist.com or Instagram, at LatoyaTheTherapist. So what do I have coming up? I have a podcast. It's audio only. It's called Say More About That. It drops every Monday. And I just talk about stuff. Like I talked about um, burnout this time. I talked about like building adult friendships and community. I've mm -hmm. talked about relationship tips. It's really just stuff that comes up for me in session. And then I just expound on it or something that like maybe somebody asked me and I'm like, oh, I want to talk about that because you can't be the only person with this um, question. Yeah. So obviously it's like mental health, relationships, wellness and stuff like that. And that is my biggest thing right now is my podcast. It's on all plat all audio platforms. Mm -hmm. It's on Spotify, Apple, Podbean, everywhere. Mm -hmm. Please find me, comment. Yeah. Um, my newsletter, it drops every week. And so if you ever needed like personal attention or like if you had a, like a quick question, um, that you, but you didn't want to book a session, you could subscribe to my newsletter and then respond to that. I do answer those. It's me. It's not AI. It's not an assistant. It is me. So if I go slow, please be gentle. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. But oh, we got. Oh, OK. We, we got one more question. OK. Uh. The question was, what are your thoughts on requiring your partner to reduce their weight or improve their health before marriage? Okay, reduce your weight is a trigger. <clears throat> People don't want to hear that. <laughs> improve your health. Lead with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and say to them, hey, we about to walk down the aisle. I don't want you to walk down the aisle and croak. Like, what's up? Let's go for a walk. And anything that you're asking them to do, be willing to do with them. Because you can't have that. Like, if I got diabetes, please stop bringing me cheesecake. I'm not strong enough to turn down the cheesecake. So, like, don't enable me. Help me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, that's real. Yeah, because you're like, hey, I'm about to go on this weight loss and, there, and there's cookies. And, and it's cheesecake. Oh, yeah, why are we yeah. doing that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, star <laughs> crunch and all these other things. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, well, hopefully uh, Latoya answered your question. <clears throat> But, you know, it was a good question. I understand the whole health thing because if we're going to do this until death do its part, I mean, obviously I need I'm, to. Right. Right. So, yeah, right. I don't know for sure. Well, And then also, you when you met them, were they their size or did they gain weight? Because I also talk about that in my book. Because here's the thing, like, mm -hmm. let's just keep it real. If you, if, I, if you met me at a two <laughs> and now I'm a 22 and no shade because I'm plus size. Mm -hmm. um, and now I'm a 22, like you this is not what you like. Like you like a two. And so I don't think that you should say, ill, you're nasty and I don't want to be with you. And I do think as age comes into play, our eyes have to mature. Um, mm -hmm. But if we got together and I was a two and I'm a 22, you're probably unhappy with that. So go to the gym with me, cook my food for me. You could meal prep for me. <laughs> Um, and then, then we can get there. But I think we have to be honest, like men are visual. And I know we say men are visual, but women are too. Yeah. And I want to look at what I want to look at. Mm -hmm. And so 
being honest about that is often uncomfortable. I feel like it's often frowned upon and it really shouldn't be because I was attracted to you at a two. You're 22 now. I don't know that I like that. Yeah. Um, and being honest about it. Yeah. Now, if they have a medical condition, please do not say that. Do not go tell your person that has PCOS or thyroid issues or whatever they got. Hey, the lady said you used to be a two. Do not do that. <laughs> Give them grace because they have a medical condition. Yeah, for real. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, and and that's a whole conversation within itself right because like you said if you was a two when you first met you know and i mean things might change you know you might like you know give or take well, i don't know you know but i do think because i mean what i used to like at 30 i might not like at yeah right but that's what i'm saying our eyes have to mature but mm. sometimes they don't mm. Okay. And if I met you at a two and I'm a 22, I can guarantee them pants that you met me in, you can't fit them either. <laughs> so we could go on this journey together. <laughs> okay? Because I didn't go to dinner by myself. I went to dinner with you. So <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Your metabolism slowed down just like mine. Right. We're in this together. <laughs> That is so good. Well, everyone, thank you so much for the questions tonight. Uh, Latoya, you killed it tonight just a oh, phenomenal thank job thank you so much for your time uh if you are watching this via youtube make sure you hit the subscribe button share this with a friend if you are listening to this via podcast leave a rating and review on apple Podcasts. would love to hear from you as well um uh, visit the website at scary to remarry.com we have my wife and i created some date night cards they're very intimate uh intimacy card deck I want you to get that and check that out because, you know, my wife and I, we really put blood, sweat and tears behind this argument. It's all kind of different stuff and, and how we're going to make this work. So make sure you check that out. Go check out the website, scarytoremarried.com. This is Sean Heineman with special guest Latoya Carter, and we are.